Hello and welcome to our country kitchen. Now Nikki asked me what's for dinner tonight and I said no Polly, it's a surprise. So what we're having is simply cactus. Believe it or not, we're going to take these pads and you've heard me talk about them and yes they are native to Kentucky. These are the eastern prickly pear and you got to be real careful. You don't want to get these little glycoids in you because they are sticky little suckers. So these are growing out of control. We have three huge patches. I'm going to get probably six or eight pads. I'll tell you inside how we're going to clean these. But tonight, yes indeed, this is on the menu. So are you ready for your Nepalis? I am. What's a Nepali? <laughs> It's a cactus. Okay. You know, we've got these out front. These we do. huge, massive spreads. Mm -hmm. You smell them. Yes. They have this wonderful, beautiful thing that's all their own. It's uh, can I ask you a question? Yes. You played in the cactus today. While you were down playing with your flowers, she loves okay. to play with I the do. flowers down by the patio. Did you have gloves? She was playing. No, I didn't. I actually, okay. I actually was very careful. You should have gloves. Yeah. But the way that I, that I prepared these things is, is actually pretty simple. I put them on this nail here yeah and to hold them and I just scraped across this way you did good. and I also use this little vegetable peeler it works really nice too make sure you get all these little glycoids you call them those are the little fine needles that get in your fingers they get and, me even with gloves you gotta be so oh, careful oh you gotta be careful and you do not want those in your mouth no you don't or in your digestive yes. system <laughs> the big spikes obviously you can get those, those are off. nice but what I did was basically cut around the whole edge mm -hmm. scraped that rinsed that, came back and cut these into little slices like so. Wow. Put them into a dish. What I put in there was a little bit of garlic, okay. a little bit of fresh garlic, a little bit of onion, some cilantro, and a little bit of vinegar. I can't believe the smell that's coming out of that for that side. I can't wait to try it. I, I now, know. something about this is when you cook it, I mean, you know how okra Mm -hmm. has a little slime, I yeah. guess you would call it, to it. This has similar properties to that. Okay. But let me read you something about these prickly pear cactuses that grow naturally in Kentucky. They grow all the way from Texas, all the way out through the eastern United States, all the way up into Canada. Yeah. If you find the proper soil and find you some south-facing area where you really get a lot of sun, mm -hmm. you can grow these. That's our landscape. It is. It's, they're got, beautiful. When they bloom yeah. right now with the orange and yellow, mm -hmm. they are absolutely beautiful. And the bees love to pollinate those. They're absolutely wonderful. Now, let me read you something from the free dictionary online okay. about these cactus. All right, listen to this. Each part is both food and medicine. It's been used for centuries. Antiviral properties are used for flu, obesity, HIV, gastrointestinal disorders, cholesterol, skin problems. The fruit, which looks like an Easter egg, also known as the pulp or tuna, mm -hmm. can be eaten much like other fruits. Now, they're not so sweet on our Eastern prickly pear, but you can still make jelly out of it. Now, it has a sticky juice that oozes from the pad when it's sliced. Now this is the same stuff that's found in aloe vera. So if you have a burn okay. or something like that, you can use this for that. These can be applied to warts. They work on kidney stones. Teas are made for <laughs> lung problems, prostate issues, diabetes. They have lots of potent antioxidants. They do more than just prevent cancer. Their benefit extends the improvement of skin health, prevention of macular degeneration, decreasing signs of premature aging. That's why it looks so young, of course. Wow, okay. And improving the strength <laughs> and performance of the brain. Really? I could use some of that. So could I. Wonderful stuff. And you said I can make jelly? Can you I can make I jelly like out of the jelly. fruit. I would like to make jelly. I'm gonna try that. And they're called tuna, okay. oddly enough. That's what the fruit is called. When they okay. ripen, we pull those off. Of course, get all the get all the spines off and, and make jelly out of it. I wanna do that. We can do that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna have that as a side. So tonight, we have been traveling we recently went to Alabama mm -hmm. in search of spotted bass. Went down there, and you shot some footage of me catch, going crazy catching these wonderful yes. fish. All right, we got some jumping action here. Now, targeting Kentucky spotted bass. Watch this. Let's see if they come up and jump. They fight so hard. Come on, let me 
It's unbelievable how they fight. Look at him pulling that line out. I'm almost spot fishing down here. I'm seeing these fish. They're swimming in packs. And I'm trying to entice them to bite and they get competitive when they all see something that's jump, 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 jump. Welcome to this week's Naturalist Notebook, and we have a naturalist with us, an artist, Rick Hill. I've known you since 1941. We worked together yep. at Fish and Wildlife, or was it 42? Uh, 41. That's what I thought. Yeah. I've known you for a long time, and we yeah. had many adventures in the Fish and Wildlife realm, and yes. hunting and fishing, right. and I think we fished together for these fish. Today's Absolutely. Naturalist Notebook is going to be to identify the difference. In this case, mm -hmm. we're going to show three of them here today. but. In this case, I was fishing in Alabama for a spotted bass. I was also back at Cumberland fishing for spotted bass because mm -hmm. I love to fish for them on a yeah. fly rod. Yeah. There's nothing like it. You've seen it happen. Yeah. Okay, so what does this have to do with the country kitchen and food and preparing food in the kitchen? Because I like to eat yeah, spotted they're delicious. bass. delicious. Right. Love to eat spotted bass. Right. What's the difference? There's a whole lot of well, comparisons going on here. The ones that are most often confused are the largemouth in the spotted mm -hmm. or Kentucky bass. But the good way to tell, if you're not sure, the large mouth, the upper jaw goes well behind the eye. Mm -hmm. On the spotted bass, it's generally under the eye. So it's quite distinct. So look at this comparison here. And, and of course, in here in the middle is the small mouth. Mm -hmm. But in the small mouth, the jaw only goes under the eye on a bigger individual it can go a little past it, but nothing like the largemouth. That, right. that, of course, the largemouth and the spotted bass have horizontal, the run along the body, the dark markings, and the smallmouth has vertical bars. Quite different, really hard to confuse those. But they're, the ones that are the most, that look alike, like I said, the largemouth and the spotted, is the, uh, you've got the horizontal rows of spots on the spotted mm -hmm. bass, thus the name spotted bass. And they often have a, along this, dark line down the middle is diamond shaped markings mm -hmm. on the back and uh, the large mouth has fainter markings just the dark usually along the center of the body except on real young bass sometimes those markings aren't as distinct right and then there are other things like the notches on the dorsal fin the spiny dorsal of course they all have a spiny dorsal and a soft dorsal fin they're almost disconnected just barely attached deep notch on the large mouth on the small mouth it's quite connected. The notch is not near as deep. The spotted bass or Kentucky bass is inter intermediate between the two. The spotted bass or Kentucky has a tooth patch Very on distinct. his tongue and it's not usually found in the large mouth. Mm -hmm. So you can also watch for that if you're still confused. That could be helpful though in, the, in case the water's turbid because mm -hmm. as you know if there's a lot of color in the water yep. sometimes the fish markings are not very distinct. So always check the jaw where it hits on the eye in the tooth patch and things like that. I'm going to hold a picture up of a, of a spotted bass and you're going to see these characteristics from Alabama that was 22 inches long. Yeah, now that's Great. an unusually large bass. Oh, they fought. Now, bass. let's talk about say you're fishing and you want to have a fish fry and you want mm -hmm. to keep some spotted bass. Mm -hmm. Check your guide yeah. from lake to lake. Yeah, because it varies. Pay attention to your creel limit. Your creel limit is simply how many of each species you can keep per day. Mm -hmm. Remember back in 1972 when I showed you with the crown how to draw? Oh yeah, yeah. Not. It really helped me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this guy, look what he does, it's amazing. I wish I could take any kind of credit for this, but I can't. All I did was throw rocks at you the whole time we were well, fishing together back yeah. in the days. Well, I, I think you did buy me my crayon set. Did you? I, that's exactly right. Oh, this was done in 2004. I was only yes. 15 years old then. Yeah. And it's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful comparison. I think this is, I, this is one of my favorite works of yours. Well. Glad you like it. Thanks for being on this week's Naturals Notebook and clearing things up for us. Enjoyed it. Thank you, Rick. All right. Here's a few more pictures of spotted bass that I caught. Now, I caught these on the fly rod. 
nice which fish. makes these absolutely when they hit that the fight is on mm -hmm. and i had so much fun nick and vic came down we had fun with them we, we caught did. some fish with them he nick, caught a fish. nick caught one <laughs> A little bit of boat traffic on the weekends. Yeah. It got kind of crazy, so you want to go there through the week yes. if you fish. Went back later in the week when we came back because the crappie bite has been on in right. Taylorsville. We caught some wonderful crappie. Kelly caught most of them. She did. But healthy desserts. That's right. We need to get started on that. We saw something online the other night. Somebody just froze a banana with some peanut butter on it. And we thought, we can take that and run with that. Oh, yeah. So we experimented and we sat down and we made a wonderful dessert, which we're going to show you right now. A banana, peanut butter, chocolate, two different treats. Right. It's almost like cheating, but they're, oh, yeah. but they're, but they're actually very healthy. And it's done in an hour. We'll freeze it. Let's make dessert. these real quick. All right, she got the semi-sweet chocolate. So, you know, this is fairly healthy. And we're making our own, we have our own double boiler. We do. two pans. <laughs> Complicated own, stuff yeah. right there. So we're just going to melt some chocolate. There's two recipes, if you want to call it a recipe, that we're going to do. We're going to take these bananas. We've got our little popsicle sticks here. We're going to take our banana and we're going to cut it into three pieces. We'll put one piece on, put peanut butter around it. Mm -hmm. The next piece, peanut butter around it. Make a little sandwich there. And then we put the melted chocolate over top of the layered banana peanut butter. Yes. Tell them what we do after that, Mrs. Warmer. Peanuts that I'm going to crush. We're going to chop some peanuts and put peanuts on. I'm telling you what, it's like you're cheating. The second one, we're going to take banana and cut it in half, put it on the mm -hmm. stick, the whole half of the banana. We're going to roll that in yogurt. I have, you could probably do flavor yogurt, but we just have Greek plain It was yogurt. delicious. Like yes. That. And I'm going to put coconut on it because Darren loves coconut. And then some almonds. Perfect. Okay. Banana, Greek yogurt, coconut, almonds. Those Absolutely tasted, healthy. They tasted like, I can't even describe it when we put those out frozen. Put them in the freezer for about an hour, hour and we'll have dessert. And you got something magic. And if you got kids or grandkids that are saying, hey, I want something yeah. healthy and they don't get dyes and they don't mm -hmm. get sugars and they get all this we wonderful for breakfast. We could have that for breakfast <laughs> or lunch. I'm going to do a fish recipe that we all love. I'm checking these for bones because I had to clean these rather quickly. Now look at the size of that filet right there. That's nice. That was a 22 inch spotted bass. They had a situation there where they had a slot limit. I could keep anything under 13 mm -hmm. or over 15. I talked to my buddy Ken Weathers who is a fisheries biologist. I used to work with him when he was in Kentucky. I said, are you sure this is right? I can take these fish? He said, we want you to take these fish. I said, all right, I can we'll do eat that. So, I was supporting my local fisheries. These are spotted bass. These are not strong. These are one of my favorite fish to eat. But I need about two cups of this for this particular recipe. And we have three quarters so of a Vidalia. Isn't that wonderful? Chopped. It is wonderful. All right, so where are we at, Mrs. Farmer? All right, we're gonna take one half cup of cornmeal and add that to two cups of flour. We're also gonna take three teaspoons of baking powder, one egg. You did that pretty good. One and you did that pretty good. <laughs> no choice. We're gonna take about six ounces, don't doubt me here, clam juice, you can find it anywhere. It adds that nice seafoody taste and a dash of your favorite beer. You don't want beer. You can use water. And then I'm just going to mix this up. To that, I'm going to add some seasoned salt and about a half a tablespoon of that, a dash of onion powder and some cayenne, just a dash of cayenne. Now, we don't want to burn anybody up here. Let's mix that in a little bit. Now, you want this to be fairly firm, fairly thick, because we're going to be dipping that out with an ice cream scooper. That's about the consistency you want. We're going to take some red pepper. Okay, I'm gonna bring this over here, Nikki, so you can so hold, can hold it for you. Come back with our no polys. You those. found all kinds of uses for those, aren't you? <laughs> I'm telling you. Smell that. Smell what that does to that. I'd say it's about a tablespoon of those. And let's come back with some jalapenos. Chopped. Depends those on hot. how much of those are hot. All right, thank you, you so see much. See what we got going on mm -hmm. here, Mrs. Farmer? Looks good. Now, we have all that onion to add. Seems like a lot of onion, but man, we need it. That's a good sweet Makes Fidelia good. onion. And look what we've got, Mrs. Farmer. We've got these wonderful fritters. 
I'm looking forward to it. All these flavors really enhance the fish flavor. And you get kind of a hush puppy yeah. deal going here. And it's probably time to start heating some grease up. Now I like, just me, I like peanut oil. And here I'm gonna come back with some black pepper. This one, if you'd like to mix that in, because we love our pepper. Yes, we do. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of granulated garlic and some salt in here. You know what, you just reminded me, I do need some corn. Why don't you right. take just one of those All right. and cut off some corn for us? That ought to be enough. Now, if you don't have fresh corn, you can use canned corn. I'd say we use probably, what, four tablespoons there? Yeah. At least four heaping tablespoons. And corn is really good in here, too. So, we're gonna get us an ice cream scoop here. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Hear the pop? I do. And then I'm gonna take that spatula and flatten those out just a little bit. Almost yeah. like little crab cakes. Oh, man, I'm telling you, this is such a good. beautiful thing. These are so delicious. I can't even tell you how good they are. You ever heard of flatter in a fritter? Mm-mm. <laughs> Keep making them as thicker or thin as you want them. The thin will make them crispier, won't it? They will. And you want your fish to get done, too. When I thought about that spotted bass, I thought, man, that would be perfect for fritters. Now, as these are browning up nicely, Mrs. Farmer. Sounds like good. We had our baby lambs. We had more rams than ewes. In fact, right. we only had one ewe. Yeah. So that presented a problem. Who do we keep for breeding? Who do we keep to eat? Mm -hmm. Because yes, we do eat our lambs. And who do we sell? So the choice was hard because we have some real specimens. They look nice. I mean some real specimens. So we had Bobby Grouter from Stable Rock come in and take a look. So he came in and told us about our rams, what to look for, for mm -hmm. a breeder, for an eater, so on and so forth. So here's Bobby giving us some advice. Grider's back now. We yes, talked a while back. You brought that monster, beautiful stud <laughs> down. Nice what was his name again? His name's High Country. High Country. Yeah. Now we tried the rent -a ram thing, and by golly, it worked. Yeah, it works. So, mm -hmm. what do you think about seeing his offspring standing oh, over here? I, I like his offspring. I expected him to see about like this, but I, right. I wanted to ask you: uh, Is that an improvement, maybe, to what oh. you were used oh. to have? Oh, I won't say double. But, but at least a third yeah. right now at this that's point. That's good. Yeah, if not more. That's good. And that's that. That's what it's supposed to be, you know, selective breeding and stuff like that. If people be selective when they breed, right. they'll improve their flock. So what I wanted you for is because this year I had way more rams than I had ewes. I only had one ewe. Right. So I got to figure out what I'm, I want to eat at least one. Right. And I want you to look at these and what you came, tell me what you came up with by looking at, at what well, we got over here. Well, we've been looking down here for a few minutes and as far as, uh, if you just want to keep a stud ram, maybe to, for yourself, right? I would definitely like the, well, he's laying down now actually, but the big white one over there. Yeah. He's, if you look at him, he's got it going on. He's got a good bone structure. He's level on top. That's always a plus. And he's got some length to him. And he's got some depth to him from top top mm -hmm. from the backbone to his belly line. Right. I wouldn't let him get out of my grasp. I'd keep him. He's going to be the, yep. the main dude around yep. here. I'd keep him for a stud rim because uh, he's got some good genetics. you got good ewes. They, they're, they're good ewes, obviously, because they raise some big lambs. Mm -hmm. It's in the genetics. Everything about everything about these animals is genetic. Yeah. If you fool around and you hang on to a bad trait, you're going to continue to have it. Yeah. It's going to breed right on down. You could open their mouth up and look to be specific, but they don't have any overbite to amount to anything or any at all. Right. If they have much of an overbite, you can see it from a distance. Right. And that's not good because it doesn't let them allow them to graze the grass good if right. they don't have the perfect bite. But you got two, you got at least two there that someone would benefit from if they want to come to you to purchase a stud ram. Looks to right. me like. The markings are good. They're too. beautiful. Yeah, and a lot of people like the markings, and they look good. But really good. You got one that's probably freezer bait. You know, I'd probably want to make a meal out of him. Yeah. 
And, and that's kind of what I'm thinking. Maybe two. Those two, maybe two, maybe yeah. those two right there. Yeah. Well, what do you think, though? What do you give me on a, on a grade on this and what I got going over here? Oh, uh, Give me an A plus. A plus. I was thinking <laughs> A, you know, and that leaves room for improvement. There you go. There so you go. I'll, t I'll take your A. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Then that, that way leaves you some room. begging for A plus. I know that's, pitiful. A plus. that's pitiful. That's yeah. pitiful. You got an A. Maybe next that's time I'll pretty good. A plus. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that A. Plus. a. Very simple dip. I always like this with fish. Mayonnaise, Thousand Island dressing, I never measure it, and ketchup. And then on top of that, just a little Cajun seasoning, and man, you got something good. You ready? How did, did you like fork? Do I pick them up? Finger food, Mrs. Finger, Lundin. ooh, I can't wait. Finger food. Mm. Oh, wow. You forgot your dip. Mm. I wanted to taste it. That is so good. Mm. Oh, wow, that's so good. That's really, mm -hmm. really, that really is, good. That's a good way to eat it. Fish, I like that. I, t I taste the Nopales in there. That's I'm good. not double dipping. I'm, I'm turning on another side. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Let me try that. Try your Nopales. Now, they look like green beans, but remember, they're not. Isn't that a burst wow. of wonderful flavor? I don't know, yeah, that's so different. I can't even describe it. A green bean, a pepper. Everything Avocado, wow. wonderful stuff. You know what? In a minute, we're really going to tear this up. Yes, I'm starving. But you know what? Because it's the show, we have to show the dessert. We do. We you think it's been in there long enough? I think the dessert let's, will be ready. Let's set this over here. We'll get back to this in just a minute, but let's try our dessert. Dessert. So excited. You get to go first on these because it's dessert. Because I made these and you made those. Mm. Look at that. I know. Is that, like, that looks like professional. I like that looks it. Looks like something you buy in the store. The grandkids would love these. It's like a frozen ice cream thing, isn't it? Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. Yum, Papa. It's like cheating. Yum, Papa. Another bite? I want to try the other one. <laughs> you know what's weird? The banana has the consistency of ice cream because it's frozen. Yes. I guess I have to try this one too, Miss mm -hmm. Laura. Let me try. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Like ice cream. Mrs. Farmer, if you want to know where you get recipes like this, where would you go? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Hit the subscribe button because mm -hmm. every time there's a new one, we'll let you know. Also, our Facebook page, we want you on there. That's right. We like to talk to folks, share recipes. That's really hard to get on to. You hit like. You hit like. It's, really it's hard. that simple. A lot of great recipes tonight. Some new stuff. Try some grub you've never mm -hmm. tried before. We did that tonight. What do you think about the fish? I, I'm going to hold this until you let me say I can eat again. It's so good. Isn't this is wonderful? delicious. You could, the kids would love these too. <laughs> they would love wow. these. But, Ms. Farmer, that yes. half hour's up. Yes, it is. So, it's all about good times. Good friends. And really good eats. We'll see you next week on a mm. brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Mm. I'm going to eat another one too. Yum, Papa. To order a cookbook, email timfarmerck at gmail.com.